Welcome to Film in 5D, the show that uploads everything film with the 5D Mark II. I'm your host, Aaron Hammack. This week, I address a question that I get a lot on which codec we use to upload to YouTube. Before we begin with this week's topic, I'd like to address a bit of new information I found about a previous topic on the recording limit issues with HDSLRs. As we discussed in this episode, cameras like the 5D are only capable of recording for 4 gigabytes at a time. This usually translates to about 12 minutes of recording time depending on what you're filming and how detailed the image is. However, 12 minutes is not the limit. You need to be concerned with the 4 gigabytes of information and the actual limit you can reach is 30 minutes. Of course, in order for your camera to be able to reach this limit, you're going to have to adjust some settings in a firmware that we showed you in this episode which is of course Magic Lantern AJ 5.9. In the firmware menu, scroll over to the video compression slash bitrate and change it from the default, which is negative eight, to a Q scale of negative 12. Also, change the type to variable bitrate. In my test, this is the highest you can push your bitrate while still getting 30 minutes of recording time. You know, those tests were pretty boring. Yeah, it's like sitting there for 30 minutes, waiting for it to finish. But like I said before, this number will always vary depending on what you're shooting. Once again, I have to warn you that this can potentially harm your camera, and I don't want to be held responsible for that, so do so at your own risk. In fact, if you notice your camera's getting hot, turn it off and lower the bitrate by raising the Q scale. Nevertheless, I hope this helps some of you who'd like to use your DSLRs for more live event shooting. Next, I'll show you the settings we use in Premiere Pro to upload our videos to YouTube. But first, a message from our sponsor. Has this ever happened to you? Dude, check it out! What? Have you tried just about everything to make them stop staring? Do you rarely go on runs just to avoid these awkward situations? Well, then you should try our new product! From the creators of Filmin 5D and products like Super Flying Paper Footballs comes a pair of glasses that are just out of this world! How do they work, you ask? Well, why don't you try them on for yourself? Now you'll never have to be bothered by those creeps ever again! These things are incredible! You simply put them on whenever you don't want to be bothered by jerks and they disappear right before your eyes! And best of all, they're stylish! But that's not all, order within the next 10 minutes and we'll include an audio device inside that will make your MP3 player obsolete. This device shoots a waveform directly into your ear that is designed specifically to drone out the sounds of annoying douchebags. See it in action! You'll be noticed a lot more while noticing a lot less. With just one payment of $99.95, that's just one payment of $99.95, these could be yours! Order now by calling 1-866-123-4567. That's 1-866-123-4567. But hurry, you now have under 10 minutes for this special offer. Don't miss out, order today! All orders are subject to disapproval without refund. Shipping and handling not included in price. Taxes may also apply to those living on planet Earth. In some cases, the glasses may not work as intended. $50 for shipping and handling. Alright, so like I said before, I've been getting quite a few questions on what settings I use to upload videos to YouTube. If you didn't already know, sites like YouTube and Vimeo considerably compress your videos from their original state, so that they play smoothly over the internet. This is important to understand because cameras like the 5D record at bit rates of over 40 megabytes per second in some cases. However, when you go to put your videos on YouTube, not only is the file large and take forever to upload, the bit rate of your footage is lowered to around 5 megabytes per second. This means that not only are you wasting time by uploading files that are too large for the internet, but the extra compression that the site has to do to get your large file down to the size that will play on the internet degrades your footage even more. That was a mouthful. That was a mouthful. This is why I recommend to encode your video at a lower bit rate, closer to what it will actually be played at on the internet. This is also why I've become a big fan of DSLR cameras, because they're much cheaper than expensive cameras like the Red Epic, and at the end of the day, the compression that YouTube does is just going to make them about the same quality anyways. But I digress. As do most people, I upload all of our videos in the H.264 codec. Not only do DSLRs like the 5D record to this codec, but I feel that it has a good quality to size ratio for the internet. I use an MP4 container with a 1080p resolution, which is 1920 by 1080 If you want 720 your resolution should be 1280 by 720 Since we're shooting at 23.976 frames per second, I like to encode the final version at 24 frames per second. And if we were shooting at 29.97 FPS, I'd encode the final version at 30 FPS. I feel that this just works better for the internet. For the bitrate, I do a two-pass encoding variable bitrate with a minimum of 10 megabytes per second and a max of 20 megabytes per second. Normally, if I was just uploading to YouTube, I'd have the minimum at 5 and the max at 10. But since we're uploading to Vimeo as well for better quality, I like to push the bitrate a little higher. Wait, wait, wait. Back that truck up. We're uploading to Vimeo now? Yeah, dude. We've been doing that for a couple weeks. Check out the link right here. Like the best quality on the internet. Bam. Bam. 
Uh, ba -ba For audio, I use the ACC codec at 48 kHz and a bitrate of 192 kilobytes per second. The quality is set to high and the output to stereo, but you can choose surround sound or mono if that's what your final track was. I then cue the video for the Adobe Media Encoder, which I like to use because it allows me to keep working within Premiere while the video encodes. I cannot stress enough the importance of encoding your video as close as possible to the size and quality it will appear on YouTube. If you compare the footage from our very first episodes to our very latest, you'll notice a huge quality difference between them. This is mostly attributed to the fact that we are uploading at a much higher bitrate than YouTube would allow. But that's it for this week. As always, if you have any questions, send them to me via at mentions on twitter.com forward slash Sharon Hammock. If you'd like to be featured on the show in the future, follow the show's Twitter at filmin 5 d for more information. Also like the film's Facebook page at this link here. We'll be back next week to ponder the end of the universe. Oh, hey, uh, when are we supposed to start featuring those videos anyways? Yeah, when we get to a thousand subscribers, we're going to start featuring them. So it's like worth it to the first people who win. So we're almost like five, we're actually right about to get to 500. So I'm thinking about putting some information up on the show's Twitter page. Uh -huh. Yeah. So then what, could you like feature my video if I made a video? How many videos do you make a month? What? How many videos do you make a month? Uh, I don't know, like one or something? No. No, sorry. Alright, cut. <laughs> <laughs> I love it! <laughs> I realized that was there. Hey Colton, what happened? He ran into the thing, man! <laughs>